Hello Cup Coders and welcome back to the Cup Code Space Program. Today we are undertaking the mission of going to the moon. We're, the job is that we land a rocket on the moon. So I've gone ahead and I built this ship here, um, hoping that this will be enough to actually get us into orbit around Kerbin, take us out to the moon and hope and maybe get us landed on the moon safely. Now the idea here is we have you know, the, we're going to send a man on this mission because it's easier than dealing with an unmanned craft because we don't have to worry, have the whole hassle of power consumption. All right, but we are going to use a special Kerbin for that. I have hired Macus Kerman for this, and we are going to be sending him on this mission instead of Jebediah. That's because if we are successful, this guy is going to be stuck out on the moon. He is never coming back. And we don't want to leave Jebediah stuck out on the moon. Now, the thing about these guys in orange suits is if you kill them, you get them back. If you strand them, you never get them back. These guys in the white suits, they're the guys that you hire. So if you kill them or strand them, you never get them back. It doesn't matter. So they're throwaway guys, whereas these three are your main crewmen. So we're not sending one of our main crewmen on this particular mission. All right. But here's our rocket as it is. The first stage is six solid state six long solid state engines the second stage is one long solid state the third stage is yet another long solid state and the fourth stage is two liquid fueled jets with the small engines we're using the lv909 liquid fuel engines behind that the last couple stages is one center stage here with one of the lv909s and surrounded by three with small tanks that's FLT100 with LV909s. Now, in general, we're only going to land on the moon with this capsule, this tank, these landing struts, and the engine right here. These three are for thrust while we're in space, or if we are not able to make it out of Kerbin's atmosphere, they are added thrust to get us out of the atmosphere. This is what actually should be used to finish getting us out of the atmosphere and get us into an orbit around Kerman, in addition to pushing us out of that orbit and into a meeting vector with the moon. Obviously, all the solid state engines are designed specifically for getting us out of the atmosphere. So we're going to go ahead and make sure we've got the right Kerman in the cockpit, Macus, and head to the launch pad. Now, I have been trying periodically off and on to do this mission off camera, and so far I have been unsuccessful. So, I'm letting you know there is a 75% chance that this is going to be a snuff film. Uh, so far, I have not been able to land on the moon, but I have been able to crash on the moon's surface. So, without any further ado, we turn on our RCS and SCS and launch it off in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. This is one of the largest rockets that we have launched so far. In general, you don't want to build really large rockets. You want your rockets to be kind of small. The smaller the rocket, the better. But you want to be able to have enough thrust to get out of the atmosphere. first stage should theoretically get you to 10,000 meters. If you do not get to 10,000 meters on the first stage, chances are you are not going to succeed in the mission. Now I have seen some people go on really, really large rockets they use more than three stages to get out of the atmosphere, and those have been successful. Now we're going to watch our cruising speed. I don't want our cruising speed to come down too far below 170. Our surface speed should start going up here shortly. There we go. Now we are going to gain surface speed. And you notice that I am flying straight up from the planet. Uh, normally around 10,000 meters I do start rolling over, but at this time I am not rolling over yet. That is because we barely are going to have enough of thrust to get us out of the atmosphere. So now we're almost at 20,000. I'm going to start rolling it over now. Very gently though.
and this way we're also giving an inclination as to which direction to go we are we tilt, tilt it over towards the east we always tilt over to the east that way you know we have a nice flat orbit in comparison to the other the orbits of the other celestial bodies now definitely we are almost through our last solid stage rocket and we are barely at 50,000 meters I don't know if we're going to succeed with this mission I, I have serious doubts but you never know so I'm going to go ahead and turn our thrust up on the next engines because we are going to need them now just because I don't think we're going to have very much success here we're going to add another stage and move these three down in here and get them prepped for launching so we're going to use these to push our rockets push ourselves out That should get us out there into the orbit that we need. Alright, that is at 100, so now we're going to tilt all the rest of it over. At this point we're going to switch to this view and we want to keep a watch on our resources too because we don't want to run out of fuel but at this point the idea is to get this orbit out into an actual orbit around the planet above 100,000 meters we don't want any portion of this orbit below 100,000 meters and unfortunately because our throttle is still up we cannot yet warp speed or warp time sorry so this will take some time and it'll definitely take some time because we are using a small engine as you can see right here it is a small engine it has it doesn't have a whole lot of thrust but when you're in a vacuum of space just a little bit of thrust is all you need and it just means that it takes more time I've also found and I think I've discussed this in a previous video that the smaller engine is more fuel efficient than the larger engines so keep that in mind as well that's another reason to use the smaller engines they're more fuel efficient they don't waste as much fuel so it, when you're going on these long missions you want to be conserve engine as much as possible and that's actually one of the things that we are going to save up for as you look in here with this mission pack there is research we can choose efficient fuels but we're going to need 500 science in order to do that um, obviously you see it's not available at this moment because we don't have enough science we only have 38 science we need a lot more science in order to get to that uh, but we do we are going to have enough to get construction one at some point probably after this mission or the next one I don't know but those are things that we can save up for later but it's also important for us to save up and get some more of the ship parts so we can build more variety of a ship that's just some of the stuff that you have to take into consideration when you're working with these these missions I'm going to pause for just a moment. Sorry about that. My daughter had uh, came in and opened the door. And she is sitting on the bed now watching me as we're recording. All right, so we should be coming into an actual orbit soon. Um, unfortunately, our orbit is really, really tall. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut the engines down now until we get to this point here that'll help us to conserve our fuel a little bit more we're going to warp until we get there all right now i'm going to push it down and thrust it up again so we can push the orbit out faster and better But in general, the higher your altitude, when you start making adjustments to your orbit, the less fuel it's going to take for you to make those adjustments. 
see the orbit is coming out right nicely here soon now. I'm just going to that, that apoapsis and making adjustments at the apoapsis. It makes it easier. Make sure I turn back down towards our our prograde marker. And right there, that tells us that our orbit is just about where we want it to be. Now, I, I have serious doubts, even though our orbit is out high enough, see, we, our periapsis is now 195 thousand meters and that's at 241 meters I still have serious doubts about our ability to actually complete this mission so we're gonna but we're gonna try it anyways all right so we set the target to the moon and then we're gonna go look from for the descending node now that means that we when we burn prograde from that node that it is going to descend us to the moon our altitude will descend in re relation to the moon um, even though it'll be ascending from Kerbin, it'll be descending to the moon. So that's where we want to go. And we're going to set our marker there and add a maneuver. Now, this is just a guideline. We don't actually have to follow this maneuver. But this also gives us a node and T marker. We want to use as little fuel as possible. As you see right about here that's where we want to make the connection right there all right so we have 32 minutes it says so we're going to go ahead and warp time back around to that three two one all right, we're going to pull time back down right now, and we're going to turn prograde. Now, I'm not so much concerned with this marker here. That marker is in relation to this th this uh, maneuver point, but we're not, I'm not so much concerned with the maneuver point because we are going to judge it visually. Now, we are just going to burn constant until it brings our orbit out, and... You never know. Maybe we might actually be able to get to the moon, but I'm not. I have serious doubts about our ability to actually land on the moon at this point. Turn around, and my daughter's playing with the cat. She's cute. All right, so we just ran out of fuel on our main stage rocket, which means we are not, even if we do make it to the moon, we are not going to have enough thrust to actually land on the moon. But we're going to go ahead and continue out to the moon just so we get there. Um, we're probably going to make go ahead and let this crash into the moon. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wasn't paying attention. You see what happens. All right, so we ha still have quite a bit of fuel left. Uh, we're going to warp time out until we get closer to the moon. You see, right as we get out here, there is a mark right there between here and here. That is where we come into contact with the moon. The Mun Encounter, as it's called. See, there it is, Mun Encounter. And then there's the Mun Escape. So in this range right there is where we can actually adjust our trajectory to land on the moon. Now, even though we're not going to be able to finish this, I, I have serious doubts about our ability to actually land on the moon at this point. I am going to go ahead and tell you how to do it, just so that you're aware. Now, real quick, let's get rid of this over here. All right, now, because the moon is right there, we want to start an orbit to it. So we're going to turn pro retrograde, which is what this marker right there indicates. 
you can see it has the three lines on it and we're going to burn retrograde that'll slow us down uh, we want to be able to bring our speed down as far as we can but that'll also bring our orbit into bring us into orbit around the moon See this start to turn and form an orbit around the moon here. And there is our orbit around the moon. Actually, that is bringing us into contact with the moon. So we are going to crash land according to this orbiting trajectory right here. Now, the next idea there. So you are aware of what really should have happened here is we really should have made an actual orbit, full orbit around the moon. Once you get into a full orbit around the moon, you just start slowing down so that you kind of, like here's the moon here, you make a full orbit around the moon so that you kind of come in slowly to the moon. You kind of just spiral into the moon. That's the idea behind a moon landing, or at least that's what it says on the web, on the wiki and on the website and everywhere else that I've read. That's the idea behind doing this. Now what we're doing here what we're going to be forced to do actually is a little bit different and it might not work. I've, it's actually been really, really close to working in my test flights. This is how I've done it. Um, as you see, we've got this on an, on a contact trajectory, as I like to call it. And, and I don't know what it's really called, but it will make contact with the moon at this point over here. The idea here is that we have this one small engine right there, as you can see it right there before we land on the moon or before we crash land whatever we're going to light this off and we're going to we're going to thrust away from the moon so it'll slow our our descent down now uh, in my testing i was able to do that but unfortunately what i ended up doing was instead of slowing myself down i reversed my trajectory so instead of coming into contact with the moon, I pushed myself away. So that's a, that's a danger that you're going to have to pay attention to. We're, but we're going to try it on this one, this attempt. So we're going to speed up time until we get closer to the moon. I don't want to come in too close. Here we go. What's our altitude now? 600,000. So we definitely want to come down further. I'm going to switch to this view here. And I want our 600, I want to wait until we get down to close to like 20,000, 10,000. We're probably not going to thrust at that point. Uh, if we do, we won't thrust much. But we're also going to change this from an orbit to a surface speed. Because the surface speed tells us what our speed is in relation to the actual ground. Um, compare that to this, the surface speed would be comparable to the speedometer in a car. You know, as you're driving along, it tells you how fast you are going in relation to the ground. Whereas orbit speed tells, well, you know, whoa, 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 okay. Shit, shit, shit. Ah! That's my fault. I was talking along and not paying attention, and we came below the mark that I wanted to stop at. But as you saw what I was trying to do at the last minute, and I was trying to turn my nose pointing straight up and thrust. That would, would slow us down so we wouldn't crash. But at the same time, I forgot to put my landing gear down. So anyways, guys, that'll be it for this episode. I want to say thank you for watching. As always, like, comment, share. Let us know you care. And we'll see you in the next episode.